What's going on guys, this is Gene Jensen. And what I wanna do in this video is I wanna show you guys all the little details that I know about how to fish a chatterbait. All right, so first of all, I'm down in Florida, chatterbait heaven, but chatterbaits can be used all over the country. They are probably one of the most successful baits that I've had or lures that I've had over the last two years. I've caught more big fish on them than anything else, mainly because they're a really good spawn, post-spawn, pre-spawn, you know, that carry the springtime bait, but I use them all summer long, all the way through winter, or all the way, all the way through fall but not into winter, winter changes everything. But anyway, so what I wanna do with this video is I wanna get you guys ready for what's coming up over the next few months. You've got pre-spawn, spawn, and then uh, the post-spawn when they're, when they're feeding back up, and, and that's when this shines. So first thing I wanna talk about are the, the rods and the reels that, and the line that you need for a chatterbait. All right, so I wanna apologize for the wind noise just a little bit. Um, it has blown hard for the last four days here in Florida, and I've tried so hard to get these videos done. So I've got my lapel mic tucked so far down in my PFD. Hopefully it blocks enough of the, of the wind for you guys to be able to hear this video. It's just been a nightmare. Uh, also makes the fishing really tough. But the rods that I'm going to use for a, a chatterbait, my favorite rod is a 7'4", medium heavy, moderate rod. Um, the original chatter crank rod from 13. Uh, they have a new Omen, uh, same thing, seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate. It's a really good uh, chatterbait rod. I don't like it for a half ounce. It's a little bit softer than the original chatter, chatter crank rod. This one I like for a half ounce and heavier uh, chatterbait. But uh, any seven foot four, medium heavy, moderate is your ideal rod. If you get into a situation where you're you're fishing heavy cover, you're ripping it through grass, you're ripping it through uh, lily pads and stuff like down in Florida. I like to go to a seven foot three medium heavy, uh, basically my jig rod, and throw braid on it, throw 50, 60 pound braid, just so uh, if I catch a fish in there, I can get it out. And also just the amount of, of force it takes to rip a chatterbait through thick, thick grass. Uh, a lot of times you really you really need that added strength of those, and that, that added, uh, stiffness of that rod. The reels, um, I like to throw a, a six or a seven speed reel, so a six three to one or a seven five to one. But if you're burning it, uh, Cody Henley won the, the 10 tournament this this week, burning a chatterbait through the pads, and he was using an eight speed reel, an eight, I don't know, eight three to one, eight five to one, burning it as fast as he could, making really short casts and just totally covered in water. So if you're burning it, up it to an eight. Now the line, we already talked a little bit about braid. I like 15, 17 pound test fluorocarbon. Um, on my chatter crank rod, I have 17 pound test because I'm down in Florida. I might up it to a 20, but I, I rarely ever do just because I just feel like it's just, it's too big to handle sometimes. I don't know, I just don't like it. I, I prefer 17, 17 pound. Um, and then the braid, 50, 60 pounds, just because that casts easier. It doesn't has nothing to do with the strength of it. It's more the diameter when you're talking about casting. 40 pound tends to backlash a little bit more than 50 or 60. All right, so there's several different uh, brands and there's tons of bladed jigs out there. I have three favorites and there's one reason why, and I've, I mentioned this in a video last year, but number one is a, is a jackhammer. Um, this one has caught a ton of fish for me. I really love it. Uh, the Picasso Shock Blade is another one. And then the, uh, the Strike King Thunder Cricket. All three of those have the blade attached directly to the jig head. And so you get the blade knocking the, uh, the head. Now, Picasso got around the, the Z-Man patent by, by designing a different way that it attaches. And, uh, and it really works well. That's a good, good, uh, a good lit, um, bladed jig. Anyway, I'm gonna call them a chatterbait just because that's what I always call them. But that's a good bladed jig. Um, I always start out with three eighths ounce uh, in thick, shallow cover. Go to a quarter, and then uh, deeper or to burn it. I'm gonna, you know, if I'm burning it, I want to keep it down. I'm gonna go a half ounce. I rarely go heavier than that. I do have an ounce and a quarter chatterbait, but I haven't never caught anything on it. So those three sizes are the ones I use the most. Colors. <laughs> Let me pull my box out. I'll show you this. There's, there's just a few main colors that I use. 
All right, so the colors that I use, I have a, a few different just basic colors. Um, for Florida, I'm gonna throw, uh, always gonna start off with a Golden Shiner color. Gold Blade, um, you know, a, a Golden Shiner trailer. This happens to be a, uh, a Gambler uh, Little Easy in 49er, which is a gold color. Let me get that a little closer to the camera so you guys can see it. Uh, a bluegill color. And typically I'll have like a Copperfield trailer on here, but I didn't have one yesterday when I put this trailer on. But I would put a Copperfield a Little Easy on it down here in Florida. Uh, just a bluegill color. A uh, green pumpkin trailer works fine, stuff like that. And we'll talk about different trailers here in, in just a second. And then a black and blue. Some type of a black and blue. This is a black and blue and green pumpkin or black and blue brown. But a black and blue when that water gets a little muddy is always good. I have whites for really clear or really uh, like the this really pretty green color. I love that green algae color water that we have in Georgia and all over the country, that good, healthy, healthy color water. And I will throw white chatterbaits in that color, um, in that color water. And then the other color I'm gonna be throwing is a green pumpkin. And right now the closest thing I have to a green pumpkin has a little bit of chartreuse in it. I'm being real careful because I don't wanna drop any of these in the water. But green pumpkin blade, a little bit of green pumpkin with chartreuse and white or just a straight green pumpkin. So it's real simple. Black and blue, white, green pumpkin, bluegill. The white is your shad bait fish color. Down here in Florida, I'm throwing the golden shiner, but uh, that's basically it. That's the simple, the simple side of it at least. Now let's talk about trailers. All right, this is my trailer bag. It's the, probably the most full bag that I have in my boat. It is crazy. Uh, and I'm gonna go through these real quick and explain why and when that you would use these trailers. All right, so probably the most popular trailer um, is, a, is a Gary Yamamoto, or yeah, trailer for a chatterbait is a Gary Yamamoto Zayco. And it's a great trailer and I use it a lot. Um, I've found others work better cert in certain situations. The Zayco is really good because you get a lot of action out of it. Really good for when you're burning um, or when you are, are ripping it through cover and that kind of stuff, or just covering a lot of water, I'm gonna throw a Zayco. So another one that's really good for, um, for burning it, and I'm gonna explain why in just a second, is a flat-tailed one. The Zayco does, this is a paddle tail Zayco, I just realized it when I put it back in the bag, but a regular Zayco has a flat tail, the Razor Shad has a flat tail, and I love the, uh, uh, what's called the Blade Minnow from Strike King is another one, and the reason is, is when you're burning it or when you're reeling it and you want to speed up a little bit and you reel, you'll see me do that a lot. I'll be reeling through stuff and I'll speed up. And what that does it, with a flat tail is it allows that bait to kick off to the side while you're, while you're bringing it to you, while you're retrieving it. And that'll cause reaction strikes from bat bass that are following it. And you get that a lot when they just follow them up. So you just speed up and it'll kick it to the side. But a boot tail won't do that. So. If it's got a flat tail, a lot of times uh, an original um, fluke, zoom fluke, will do it amazingly with very little sp uh, speed up. It'll kick it off to the side. Just makes it hunt a little bit. The last trailer I want to talk about is one that if you're fishing brush piles or wood or things like that, a, 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 a chatterbait just loves to hang up in them. And, it, and I, in one of my original chatterbait videos years ago, I told you never to fish a chatterbait in wood. Well. There's a way to reduce the number of hangups and increase the number of fish you catch while uh, fishing through wood. And that is with a, a flat style trailer, okay? So this is a Gambler Komodo and it's a beaver style body is what I'm kind of talking about. The, uh, the uh, Rage Bug is one, any kind of those flipping baits that have that, have that flat body on one side and I like the Komodo because it is designed for a chatterbait. It, it threads well this way and it threads well that way. And so when I'm bringing it through wood cover, I'm gonna thread it on the hook flat like this. So when it rides up over top of that wood, it doesn't roll over and hook into that wood. But when I'm covering water, I'm doing it this way and it works great because it doesn't have a boot tail, doesn't have anything that the action's gonna get stolen by the blade just the wobble of the chatterbait will wobble that. It's a really good bait. The, the Z-Man or the, uh, the Strike King Rage Bug is really good because it's got a ton of action in the tail 
And if you turn it sideways, that action will actually lift your bait up a little bit and have a 30, 3 8 ounce run a little shallower, a half ounce run a little shallower. And if you don't, like this week, I didn't have a quarter ounce, so I, I turned my bait sideways and I put on a, a craw bait that had a lot of kick. I think I put on a Rage Craw. And, uh, and it caused it to rise up a little bit and I was able to fish it a little bit better in that shallow grass. So think about that. The, the trailer really does have a lot to do with the bait, the action, how high, how shallow or how deep it runs. Um, and, and it can either really help the action or if you pick the wrong trailer, you can kill the action. And the way you can tell that is when you're running it back and forth in the water and if that tail isn't moving at all, take that son of a gun off and find one that you can use that has a lot of action or at least the tail is moving because that blade can kill the action of whatever trailer you use if it's the wrong trailer. So a chatterbait shines in grassy water. You know, you get the water with hydrilla, milfoil, whatever. I mean, and that, that chatterbait can come through that really easy. Uh, we'll talk about, about that when I get out here and show you guys how to, how to use it in different kind of things, in different kind of cover. But it's really good when there's nothing. The lake I fish back home has no grass. Uh, it has grass carp to kill all the grass. It's, it's bare bottom nothing. But I wear them out on a chatterbait and I wear them out with a really, and I can talk about it now because I can't do it on this lake, a really slow retrieve. The, the trick is, is to, um, the best way I can explain it is cast out a half ounce or a three eighths ounce chatterbait, let it sink to the bottom, then pull your line tight for a second, just pull it tight. And what that does is you, when the, your bait sinks to the bottom, it has a bow in the line. But when you pull your line tight, it will flatten that bow out in your line. And when you start retrieving it, it'll help keep your bait down a little bit further. It won't rise on that first initial five or six turns. It'll stay down a little bit. Then you wanna reel so slow that one, you feel the blade and the bottom at the same time. And so you're just skimming the bottom. And it's very difficult to do. And as if you don't feel the bottom, slow down a little bit. If you don't feel the blade, speed up a little bit. And keep doing that as you're working your way through that structure, through that bottom area. And I'm telling you, they wreck it. It's, it's how you do it. You've got to be bumping something with a chatterbait or kicking up a little silt or mud or whatever. Works really good on farm ponds. Let it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then you don't want to try to totally fit them because a lot of those farm ponds are silty, but just slowly retrieve it to where you just barely feel that blade and keep it down low and the, and the bass will annihilate it. It's one of my favorite ways to catch them when there's no grass at all. All right, so let me lift up my power pole, grab my chatterbait, and I don't know if we're going to catch anything today. His bite's been pretty tough. I think they've moved shallow to spawn. Um, we might try that a little bit later, but I don't have a whole lot of time today. But we are going to talk about how to fish it. All right, so the first way I don't like to do, <laughs> but... It just won a tournament this, actually it almost won two tournaments this weekend uh, in, in the KBF, in kayak bass fishing. And uh, this is, uh, y'all gotta see this, this is two eagles fighting. One bald eagle, two bald eagles. They're either fighting or breeding. I wish this thing could zoom in, it's pretty cool. There's one, two, three, four, Four bald eagles and an osprey above me. Anyway, back to learn how to fish. All right, so back to burning a chatterbait before I was so rudely interrupted by some bald eagles. Pretty cool though. There's a bunch of them right here. Anyway, so burning a chatterbait, you get an eight three to one or an eight speed reel and it's exactly what you think it is. Cast it out, let it sink a couple of feet and you're gonna burn it back in and what's happening with What's happening with the bait while you're doing that, if you have a flat tail trailer or something that doesn't have a boot tail, this one does it a little bit, is it's kicking. It's what we call hunting. So it's, it's not going in a straight line, it's going back and forth. And the trailer is what causes that. The best trailers are, like I said, the flat ones, uh, the blade minnow, uh, the razor shad, the Z-Man razor shad, everything else. And I'm gonna leave a link down in the, the description an affiliate link to Tackle Warehouse for all the baits and all the rods and reels that I talk about here. That's if they're still made. Um, but uh, anyway, so 
that's burning it. It's pretty simple. And what Cody was doing this week when he won $10,000 was he was going through the lily pads and he was making like quarter cast, little short, short cast. He figured out that if he threw it, casted it too far into the pads, he'd get it hung every time. But if he made short casts, he wouldn't get it hung. So he was covering water through the pads and making short cast and burning it back to the boat so fast that it sounded like the bait never hit the water. And so it's just, that's how fast you're doing it and you're trying to get it to kick. So. And it really does work specifically when they're right about to spawn or when they're spawning. My next retrieve is the one that I probably do the most when I'm working through grassy cover. We've got a few little lily pads right here. We've got hydrilla that's just under the surface out in front of me and stuff like that. And this is when you need that, that moderate power rod, but you need it to be stiffer than your normal uh, medium heavy moderate cranking rod. That's why the chatter crank rod is so good for this, or the, and I'll put a link down for the, for the Omen one that I use a lot, is a seven foot four, medium heavy moderate, but it's a little bit stiffer than, than a normal cranking rod. So, I cast it out. I'm gonna let it sink most of the way down to the bottom. I'm not too worried about it hitting the bottom. But the thing is, is I've got the butt of the, of the rod tucked into my shoulder or tucked into my, my chest just underneath my arm and everything is pretty stiff and when I hit something like a piece of grass I'm going to pop it and I'm not going to pop it so much I'm just going to kind of turn a little bit and what that does is it pops it free of that grass and it gets you that reaction strike if there's not a lot of grass I do it with my wrist okay so if there's a ton of grass and it's a little bit thicker I have to pull it hard with my whole body turning but when I'm when there's not a whole lot of it, I'm literally just popping it. And I'm going to drift a little bit. I'm going to move forward just a hair. Let me get that. Let me get my motor guide working. Kind of move forward just a hair. Get into that thicker grass and show you guys. All right, so when you get into that thicker grass, you've got two options. You can rip through it or you can fish over top of it. And when I'm ripping through it, that's when I have that butt of that rod, that long butt. And I'm literally it's tucked under my shoulder my arms real stiff and as I hit these and get them hung in there I pop free now if this happens which happens a lot this is milfoil by the way guys see that milfoil this happens a lot there's a way of getting the grass or you know this the the vegetation off of your chatterbait and if you feel like feel your blade stop working and you can't get it to kick back up it's a real quick pop pop is all it is. You're literally dropping to a slack line and ripping it just like that. Okay. And that's when, whoo, I thought I got a bite. Um, that's, that's when it rips free and it comes back nice and clean and you can keep fishing it. So it's a real quick drop it to a slack pop line and you're literally ripping it pop pop and then you go back to fishing it. Okay. A lot of times you'll get a reaction strike when that happens. Okay. Now, if you want to ride above the grass, if it's a little bit thicker and a little clumpier, hold your rod tip up high. Okay, and as you run into that grass, just kind of pull up just like this. Run into it and you just pull up and you'll feel it. And this is hydrilla. If I can get it. That's hydrilla. Five leaves around the stem. It's my favorite grass. So if you find yourself getting hung up a lot with your rod tip down, you just raise your rod tip up high and start reeling. And you hit something, you pop it. Okay? Now, the next one is an extra achieve is one that I did at the, Na the KBF National Championship. Uh, this last year on the second day the first day they were crushing a chatterbait but they it didn't matter how you were throwing it the second day they were a little bit in a funk maybe i beat them up a little bit maybe the, the weather changed or something like that and so what i was doing was i was throwing it out i was letting it sink to the bottom and i was i was hopping it okay I was just going pop and I was just popping it. I was imagining it popping only about 12 inches off the bottom. Okay, same thing. I tuck the butt of my rod underneath my elbow. I don't know if you guys can see that with this camera angle. Butt of my rod underneath my elbow, just like this. Okay, and I'm using my whole arm. 
so I don't get worn out during the day. And I'm hopping it, letting it sink down to the bottom. And I'm just retrieving and hopping it, letting it sink down to the bottom. I just hit a big old wad of hydrilla. But uh, that's, it really worked and they would eat it. I mean, they choked it that day. And, and it was great because um, you, you don't ever lose a whole lot of slack in your line. So you can really feel the bite and you don't, you don't lose a lot of fish. You don't miss a lot of bites. Oh, there's a fish right there. Gosh, he hit it on the way down. And that tells me I need to be doing this. But anyway, the next one is a stroke. It's called stroking is what I'm doing right now. And I literally will drop my hand down to the butt of my rod and I'll pop that thing up and then I'll drop it to a slack line. And what that does is it rips it up off the bottom and lets it fall straight back down and it gets bit. And that's what we did the third day of the national championship because they weren't hitting it when we were hopping it. We had to stroke it all the way up to the surface. And a lot of times they'll hit it on the way up. All right. As you can see, a, a chatterbait is really, really versatile. Um, let's talk about the next retrieve. Now, the most basic retrieve, the one that you want to be doing the most um, when you're just learning a chatterbait is an erratic retrieve. I'm not talking about, you know, most people think, oh, it's just a cast to retrieve bait. All I got to do is just throw it out and reel it in and I'll catch one. But no, it works a little bit different than that way I'd like to do it when when I'm just covering water is I'll speed up and I'll slow down and of course I get it hung in grass but I speed up and I slow down and I'll pop my rod a little bit make it do crazy stuff and make it look like a crazy bait fish and then the bass will hit it I mean it's one of those things where you don't just want to cast it out and reel it back in you know just pop it a little bit mess around with it you get the most strikes when this thing either hits something or changes direction and you'll catch more fish promise you this bait i don't know what it is and i'm going to be totally honest with you about a chatterbait when it first came out the original chatterbait came out it was you know it was a tournament a bass tournament that was one down here in florida or the guy came in they, they came in third or fourth was throwing it it just became very popular i didn't fish it for like three years i thought it was a joke i mean it was one of those you got to be kidding me baits and it took a while for me to, to, to love up to it. Now, dude, I don't go anywhere without it. It's a really, really good bait. It really does catch fish. It, it, you ought to throw a couple of them in your tackle box and go out and fish them and try them on whatever bodies of water you're, you're fishing. Even in the Ozarks, where you think the only thing you could throw is a crankbait, a chatterbait will work. Um, I love it. I love a chatterbait. I love to fish it, but, uh, but especially down here in Florida, that's about all I throw. But I hope you guys learned something from this video. I, I hope that you can get out there and get be successful with a chatterbait. But like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.